I'd like to call the meeting to order. If everyone would stand for the invocation. Let's bow our heads and remember we're in the presence of the Lord. Heavenly Father, as we gather here this evening, we want to ask your blessings upon those families in our city who have recently lost loved ones, um, and in particular the family of Wilbur Lee Hull, who was a member of District 5 who recently passed away. We want to ask for your wisdom this evening and the decisions that we have before us. But tonight, Lord, we come to you with heavy hearts for our, our friends on the East Coast, those in New York and New Jersey and along the whole East Coast that are suffering the devastation of Hurricane Sandy. And um, we understand their pain. We understand what they're about to go through. And we just ask that you be with them um, and help them to heal and, and rebuild and, and get through this devastation. In your name, we pray for all these blessings. Amen. Councilmember Carroll, could you lead us in the pledge? I pledge Madam Chairman, you have a quorum this evening. In accordance with Council Resolution Number B14550, please be advised that all cellular telephones, pagers, beepers, and other devices of this nature must be deactivated or silenced throughout the Council meeting. The consent agenda. I think you need to re read. I'll it. do the consent real quick, and then we'll. Can you read? Yeah, don't you have to read everything on consent now? Oh, that's true. Grab my phone. You've been away, huh? Yeah. yeah. All right, we're going to, um, at this time, the administration has requested that we change the order of business to take item 18A at the beginning of the meeting. Motion by Councilmember Black, second by Councilmember Brannigan to change the order of business. Council members, please vote. Madam Chairman, motion passes 7-0 to change the order of business. And I wanted to just say very quickly, if any of the council members notices their machine moving, um, just bring it to the attention of the council clerk. Um, it doesn't seem, appear to be happening now, but if you're unable to vote, she'll have to do it manually from her position. Okay. Item 18A, <clears throat> at the request of the administration, the Louisiana Department of Environmental Quality to address the City Council in regards to the award of a new $21 million Clean Water State Revolving Fund loan to the City of Kenner. Okay. And who is going to make the introductions? Is it the administration? Council members, um, we're pleased to tell you that uh, Secretary Peggy Hatch is here tonight, uh, along with uh, two of our deputies, Dr. Peening and uh, Bijan, and uh, they're here to uh, address the council and also present us with a uh, replica of a check we'll soon be getting. So, Secretary Hatch. Thank you so much for this opportunity. Again, I'm Peggy Hatch. I'm the Secretary of the Department of Environmental Quality. I would like to acknowledge Dr. Alex Apining, who is a Deputy Secretary who oversees the Revolving Loan Group, and also Bijan, Sheriff Connie, or Bijou as we like to call him. You want to say hey? Hey, Bijou. Okay. <laughs> His staff works really hard on these applications with applicants, and they, they do a great job from the beginning to the very end. It's a small staff and they work really hard and I just wanted to give them a thank you. Uh, we're very happy today to be here to present a check for $21 million, which is on top of the $22 million check that we gave a while back, correct, Alex? Yes, to address wastewater treatment pro uh, issues within the uh, Kenner and uh, great job. We look forward to working with the Kenner throughout this whole process and uh, just shows the dedication of, the, of Kenner 
and the mayor and the council and the people to uh, be able to use to go to go forth and use this money to address wastewater issues. It's a very big problem within the state and across the nation. I'm sure you're all aware of that. And this just shows great faith, great effort, and I'm very happy to be here. So with that, we will present the big check to the mayor. Oh, he, hey, mayor. And I'd like okay. to ask y'all to all come down, and we'll take a photo with, with the secretary. Okay. Thank you. We'll make our comments when we come back. Well, Secretary Hatch, it is such a pleasure first to welcome you to our chambers and um, not to be outshadowed by the joyous event that, that uh, we are here tonight to uh, celebrate, even if it's ceremonial, we know that that check is not going in the bank, that, but we um, certainly have all been committed up here to doing whatever it would take to um, get your attention and, and show you that we are committed. And so this additional funding is just really going to make such a difference in our city. And so um, whatever else we can do to convince you that we're serious about it, um, I think please. You have. Well, good. <laughs> um, but we have a couple of council members. Um, the first w who wishes to speak. There's nobody that's talked more about <laughs> sewage, and that's the nice word that I can say, <laughs> than, than Council Member Black. She's been here the longest, and this issue has been the thing that she's, we've talked about it a long time, but we just haven't been able to have ideas about how to address it. So I'm gonna give it to Council Member Black, because I'm certain she is, this is a proud moment for her, so. Thank you, Madam Chairman. Yes, I, I'm elated. I can't tell you how excited I am. Uh, 15 years ago, I set a goal in my mind that I wanted to have the, the whole sewer system in Kenner revamped because I knew that it was, a it was an aging system and the terracotta pipes were sinking and were bad uh, infrastructure. And I thought it was almost impossible. We would need about 50,000. I think, see, we, I think we need seven more. Seven more million. <laughs> But I know if we do, I know, we know where to go. And so often government agencies get a bad rap. Well, I want to tell you, I'm here to praise the DEQ for what they have done for our city, um, pra praise our administration for initiating this, uh, this whole situation that ha that's re helping it reach fruition. And I couldn't be prouder to be a citizen of, of Kenner. So thank, thank you, you all so much, so much that you have um, been so instrumental and uh, tough, we had to jump, jump through some mm -hmm. hurdles, but mm -hmm. we did, and, um, and when we did that, you all were most accommodating. So thank you thank for Thank you being so here. much, and again, the staff under Dr. Opening and Bijan Sheriff Connie do a great yes. job uh, overseeing this program. I, I appreciate everybody that's here today from the big city of BR, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, thank you all for coming, and I appreciate everything you all did. Thank, thank you. you. Um, Mr. Quickly, was that to speak earlier, your request, or would you like to speak again? 
Uh, no, I, I think I'd be remiss if I didn't mention the fact that both Tim Hardy and Joyce Matthews are here, uh, who have helped us a great deal with um, going through the process with DEQ. So both Tim and, and Joyce are also here. I'd like to welcome them and, and thank them. And also uh, David Wolf, who did a lot of the paperwork and got it through the Bond Commission. So David Wolf is also here too. So I just wanted to mention to the council members that they're also here. Thank you. Council Member Stagney. Thank you, Madam President. I, I too was going to reiterate that uh, Ms. Black has talked a lot of blank more than anybody else, <laughs> I assure you. Uh, but it wasn't until the last administration and council and this administration and council that showed that we had to finally stop the bleeding and solve the sewage problem in this city. And, and the first commitment of $22 million, uh, is not only a commitment by that administration, this administration, and both the councils, it's a commitment by our citizens who by and large have accepted that we had to pay a little bit more money to make our system uh, part of the 21st century. Uh, we appreciate uh, your department, uh, your staff with Dr. Apine. I was gonna reiterate what uh, Mr. Quigley said, Mr. Wolf, uh, Ms. Matthews, uh, brought us, and Mr. Hardy brought us through this process, and I, I, I know you see the commitment on behalf of all of Kenner, its governing body and citizens, and it, it will make a great deal of difference from us, for us going forward. So to you and your predecessor, we appreciate the commitment that you've made allowing us to get the low interest loan, and uh, we will do a good job on behalf of all the taxpayers of this state. So thank you very much. You're welcome. Council Member Janapolis. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. And, and, and once again, you're right, uh, Councilman Stagg, this administration and this council, you know, decided it was time to do the infrastructure improvements. And, and, and to the public who's listening, you know, $22 million, and then we have another check for $21 million. It is so costly to repair sewer issues and problems in this city. It, it, it comes at a, at, a, at a tremendous cost because of the technology, because of the, the, the uh, applications that are involved, because of the way we have to do the lift stations, the 78 lift stations here in Kenner. And, and, and the $51 million total, and I believe there's some other millions that we're also uh, applying for as well, is gonna go very far in, in, in repairing the problem that has been neglected for so many years here in Kenner. And this, this administration, this council, ha has brought forth to the public that we need to fix our infrastructures. And I can tell you, my district has been uh, a beneficiary of those loans. Um, we've had some major improvements and major projects in my district. Uh, the Ole Miss lift station and the uh, West Stanford lift station, as well as a force main in my district. And that has quite, a, has impacted those communities and made a, quite an improvement in, in life in those areas. And once again, we thank you, Ms. Hatchett. I understand that you went from enforcement to Santa Claus, and we thank you, okay? I like being Santa Claus. <laughs> You're welcome, great Thank job. you. It's better. It's like going from being a parent to a grandparent, right? <laughs> you had to be right. the toughie, now you can just be the one that gives everything. Okay, Council Member Dinapolis, you're finished? I am done. All right, Council Member Carroll. Thank you, Madam President. Uh, Secretary Hatch, uh, Ms. Matthews, Mr. Hardy, Mr. Wolf, on behalf of the council and myself, again, I'd like to thank you and your administration and your staff for all of your hard work. And also, this is an opportunity that the, general, the public can see where elected officials and government agencies can come together and work on things for the betterment of the community. And this is one example that if you really try, you can see that it can happen. And I think we have the confidence with the first 20 million and we will have the confidence in our citizens for the for the just remaining 21 million. So again, thank you. Uh, I represent one of the uh, oldest districts in the city whose system is antiquated uh, sewer and, and drainage. So we understand that uh, the problems that affect our neighbors to the north of us affect us also. Mm -hmm. And we all in this together. And again, we appreciate your support. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you, Madam President. Thank you, Council Member Carroll. Council Member DeFrancis. Thank you, Council President. Again, thank you on behalf of all of us and the people of Kenner. And I will tell you that under the previous administration, uh, under Mayor Muniz and Pratt Redding, under the present administration of, 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 of uh, 
uh, Mayor Yenny and his administration but, and this council, as well as the new members on this council, we have worked together diligently to address the sewage and drainage problems in the city of Kenner. And when I first got on the council, uh, it was brought home to me in a very, very particular way. A lady from Holly Heights had come to me with the paperwork about this thick that for so many uh, administrations, they had been promised that they would no longer have sewage backups in their home, and yet the money was never there, was never allocated, was never available to address the problem. She had been living with sewage backups periodically in her home, and the people around her as well, and she had kept all the paperwork to say promises were made and yet were never kept. Mm -hmm. This council and, and the previous administration, this administration, where it, we were all able to work together to help her with that problem. Mr. Reddy and I got together, Mayor Muniz, this council with the support of this council, we were able to address that problem. But there were so many other problems that needed to be addressed throughout the city of Kenner in every district. And we just didn't have the resources. And now with all of your help, we're going to be able to make this city one where people don't have to live. Uh, in those substandard conditions that we're going to make it a city where people are happy to live. So thank you on behalf of all of us and the people of the city. Thank you. Okay, uh, Mayor Yenny. I'd just like to say when Ms. Hatch was in her old job, uh, one, of, one of the uh, members of her administration called us and said, um, you know, we all have a serious issue in Kenner with storage. And uh, so I said, okay, well, then we need to address it. And there was silence on the phone. And the person says, wait, you mean you're not going to hang up? And I said, no. And I said, well, a couple of administrations ago, we got hung up on. So I said, no, we're not going to do that. We're going to diligently work to fix this problem. And Mayor Munez took it, to, you know, and, and, and we ran with it. And I've taken it to the next level. And we wanted to continue to do what we can. And I tell Duke all the time, if our debt to income ratio gets better, we, if you all have that good loan, we might ask you all for some more money. So, so we certainly hope to, you know, get these projects done. And thank you so much, Madam Secretary. Thank we you. appreciate all your help and your staff's help. They've been great. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, thank y'all. Y'all deserve this. Still more. Still more. Councilmember Reno. Thank you, Madam Chair. I just, I'm going to make mine short and sweet. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Again, y'all worked very hard. The, the town, the city of Kenner, the council, the, the, people who live here great job by everyone and the work is just beginning and I do have a great staff who will help you through the process so again great job by Kenner okay and um, just to wrap things up because I think that's it for everyone to speak that um, you know it wasn't that administrations of long ago because I've been on the council for 16 years so I've been through a few of them um, there was always just a little bitty bits and pieces that we were able to address to, to make things happen. And it wasn't until we got an eccentric millionaire who became our mayor, who could think bigger than we ever did and in ways that we never could, that really, I think, got the ball rolling in terms of thinking bigger than what we'd ever imagined in terms of what we could do and accomplish. And um, so, and this administration and this mayor has stayed uh, on course with that program and and anyway councilmember black said if we if it happened she would retire so we're all on board it only cost us 43 million dollars to get her to retire oh, no. yeah two more years <laughs> she's got to wait to see if all the projects happen no but you know it's it's not for lack of anybody ever wanting to in all the years i've been here wanting to solve what problems we have it was just so insurmountable it was just there was no way that we could do it alone so with your help um and with you the resources available to us through your department, uh, we're seeing that, that dream become a reality. So thank you um, for being here. Thank you for all of your efforts and to our mayor and administration and of course to Mr. Wolf um, and to this council because it was a brave thing to do. You know, sewage is not very glamorous. No, it's not very sexy. Yeah, it's not sexy at all. And so when you tell people that there's some people who can't flush their toilets and they can, it's not always, you know, their priority. So um, the, it's it's taken a commitment on behalf of everyone. So um, we we pat ourselves on the back as much as we uh, extend our gratitude to you. So uh, good job. Thank you. Thank you. Great job. Thank you. Council Clerk. <clears throat> yes, ma'am. The consent agenda. Item one, approval of minutes, the regular council meeting of October 18, 2012. Item two, approval of alcohol beverage permits and applications. We have none. Item three, approval of bingo and public gathering applications. Item 3A, application number 1715-12, Treasure Chest Casino to hold a public gathering for an outdoor music festival on November 10, 2012 
from 12 p.m. to 8 p.m. at 5050 Williams Boulevard, Kenna, Louisiana. Item 3B, application number 1716-12, City of Kenner Department of Parks and Recreation to hold a public gathering for a farmer's market on the first and third Saturday of November and December of 2012 from 8 a.m. to 12 p.m. at Heritage Park. Item 3C is application number 1720-12, City of Kenner Department of Parks and Recreation to hold a public gathering for a farmer's market on November 17, 2012 from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. at Heritage Park. Item 4 is correspondence reports from the mayor, CAO, or department heads. We have none. Item 5 is acceptance of rejection of bids requiring an expenditure of less than $5,000. We have none. Item 6 is change orders requiring an expenditure of less than $5,000. We have none. Item 7 is acceptance of committee findings for final passage. We have none. Item 8 is resubdivision ordinances for final passage. We have none. Motion by Councilmember Black, second by Councilmember Brannigan on consent. Council members, please vote. Madam Chairman, motion passes 7-0. Under the public appearance agenda, item 9, public hearings for final passage. Item 9A is a public hearing regarding summary ordinance number 11,380, an ordinance creating a board of standards and appeals for the city of Kenner, designating the powers and duties of the board, establishing the membership thereof, and enacting and amending sections 5-81 and 13-52 of the Kenner Code of Ordinances. Motion by Council Member Stagney, is that for one meeting, DeVero? Or Yes? Well, so did Council, Council Member Stagney did first, so that's why I want to give who's making the motion for one meeting deferral council member stagney second by council member dinapolis council member dinapolis do you wish to speak on deferral no i actually what what i was going to state is that we you know we've been tweaking this for the last couple of weeks and and at the request of councilman stagney that we um defer this for one more meeting and i know at the last minute we've made some changes and things so i i think it's appropriate that we give the adequate time for the Council to digest those uh, those changes and amendments, and so I'm going to second Councilman Stagney's motion for deferral for one meeting. Okay, okay. Seeing no further discussion, Council members, please vote. <clears throat> Madam Chairman, motion passes seven zero. Item ten is opening of bids. We have none. Item eleven is reclassification of zoning for final passage. We have none. Item 12 is other ordinances for final passage. Item 12A is summary ordinance number 11,396, an ordinance amending section 3-24C of the Kenner Code of Ordinances to exclude city-owned immovable property, buildings, and facilities from the location and physical requirement provisions. Madam Chairman, we've received a request this, this afternoon to remove this item from the agenda. Motion by Council Member Stagney, second by Council Member Black, to remove item 12A. Council members, please vote. Madam Chairman, motion passes 7-0 to remove. Item 12B is summary ordinance number 11,419, an ordinance amending the Kenner Code of Ordinances, Article 2, Section 15-18-6, entitled Speed Limit Established Exceptions Generally to amend the time limits for school zones to extend the time to provide for the later Jefferson Parish School Public System dismissal hours due to Hurricane Isaac. Motion by Council Member DeFranchis, second by Council Member Brannigan. Council Member DeFranchis. Thank you, Council President. I was first contacted by the principal of Chateau Elementary about problems that were created because of the confusion that existed because of the times listed on the signs leading to and from the school. And so this is our way of making sure that there is no confusion, that no accidents result as uh, because of the changes made by the school system. Uh, and again, this is a temporary change. We try to minimize the cost to the city by not having new signs made, but simply all, by simply um, doing what needed to be done to make it clear uh, to the people in those areas that the time had changed only until, I believe, March. Um, so again, it's a temporary measure, so we're asking for your support. Okay, I just have one question. I see where um, it will only remain in effect until March 1st, 2013. Are we gonna leave the starting time of the afternoon from 2.30 to, uh, till 2.30 instead of changing that? I see what we're changing is, it says from 2.30 p.m. to 4 o'clock p.m. 
We're changing the four to five. So the 230 reflects what? Wait, let me give you a mic. The 230 reflects the current time, in, uh, depending upon whether it's a middle school or an elementary school. And so what we're doing is changing it from that time to the new time, which is an extension of school hours only until March 1st, uh, so the children can have sufficient num number of uh, in-classroom, uh, in-class time in order to um, fulfill the requirements by the state. No, uh, no, I understand the purpose of changing it. I'm mm -hmm. asking the time of 2.30 that exists in the original legislation. Right. It, it's it's 2.30 to 4 o'clock p.m. We're changing it from 2.30 to 5 o'clock p.m. Correct. What does 2.30 reflect? 2.30 is the current time when some of the children get out of school. And is that... Is that in effect right now, that yes. they're going to be getting out at 2.30 even with the time change? No, they're no longer going to be getting out at 2.30. With well, that's the time why I was asking, do we I, I think leave it for an hour The language and a half? may be a little bit ambiguous, perhaps, for some. But what happens is normally the children get out early, okay, about 2.30. Right. They're no longer going to be dismissed at 2.30. I understand. And I, I know you understand that, but evidently the confusion is to why it's better. Why do we have two and a half hours of school zones? To 3:30, because some of because you have to understand that elementary schools get out even later than middle schools do, and by I mean excuse, so therefore in order not to have separate times for elementary school and middle school they simply extended the general time, but the signs will reflect the signs will reflect what is appropriate for each of those schools. Okay, Mr. Well, Jose Gonzalez is actually the one who worked on it, so I'm going to let him explain it perhaps. Perfect. It may okay. clarify why he changed it the way he did. Okay, Mr. Gonzalez. Uh, I'm going to try to keep it as simple as possible. What we are probably going to end up doing is contacting every school, yes, sir. okay, and get the input from them, and we'll modify the signs accordingly. Okay, because I, I didn't understand why there had to be a two-and-a-half-hour span if we're changing. You know what I'm saying? Like, if we're moving it up an hour, why aren't we moving both of those an hour? But what you're saying is that it's not going to be for two and a half hours, that it's a school zone. It's going to be with... Right. It's going to be within that time that the, the ending time of each individual school would happen. That's correct. Uh, I think there's going to be a variation. So I, I think we, it's going to be incumbent upon public works to contact every school. Number one, evaluate the sites to see how many signs we're talking about, and then talk to the principal and, and, and see what we need to do on a temporary basis. Okay, and let me explain to you why th that this was my question. I mean, I understood the whole premise that the times were changing, so we had to change the time. <laughs> but there's oftentimes that a ride by school zone, and it's the lights are on, the school is already in session, and there's still school zone hours. And so I don't know, I was wondering how we communicate with the schools to set those times because I know, for instance, on West Esplanade, Alexander's already in class for a, an extended period of time when it's st the lights are still on and the school zone is still in effect. So I, was, I didn't want to extend that time any further by giving another hour for schools. That's why I, didn't, I wanted to understand what we were actually going to do to make certain that we're not having school zone times when it's not appropriate? We're not. Okay. So how do we determine those school zone times that we have the school lights still on when the school's already in well, session? I guess, it, you know, it has to do with, you know, uh, children, latecomers, you know, that we got to, you know. I mean, is there a rule as to 15 minutes after school started or something like or something that? Something like that. You know, it's, it's, it's an abundance of caution. If okay. anybody shows up, any of the parents show up late with the kids, and, you know, and they drop them off, we just want to be, you know, cautious as to, you know, the school zone. So okay. we, we just do a buffer period, and okay. that buffer period is probably controlled by, you know, the schools or the school board. Okay. I didn't know if there was some set. Pr I could see before school that there'd be an extended period of time because kids arrive at different times. Right. Once the school bell rings, not that I'm saying it needs to be off at that time, but this is 20 and sometimes 25 minutes later. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, why do we keep it almost a half hour longer than it need be? Okay, that was my question. Let me see. Uh, Council Member Reno. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, I, my my question on this, and maybe I'm not reading this right, 
Is this effect in every school that's in the city of Kenner? The, the time changes for every school? In, in all likelihood, yes. Okay. Okay, and because they're all cashing up as a result of the periods that they were off during Hurricane Isaac. And some schools may be different than others. So, so uh, I mean, you so know. we're we're not changing all of the signs and putting five o'clock on the signs. I, I don't think all the signs are going to be consistent. I think it's going to be incumbent upon us to contact the principals, and 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 find out. You know, for the most part, they're probably all going to be the same, but but there's going to be some variation. I just don't want to get a bunch of phone calls of people getting a ticket and they said, well, the sign says two thirty to four, mm -hmm. and I got a ticket at four thirty. I mean. How is the public going to know that this is out here? Are we calling everybody and saying, oh, I just want you to know, and everybody in the whole state of Louisiana and people from other cities and other states? Because, you know, I'm just, without posting it, I think that there's a problem. Well, well no, we're going to change the signs. Okay. And we're going to save the signs. But you, you just said other, we have to check with each school to see Absolutely. how it Absolutely. You okay. know, but we, the, the game plan is to change the signs. Now, in March, those all signs are going to be reinstalled. Okay. Okay, so we're not throwing them away. You know, we're storing them, and then we fabricate new signs for this makeup period. Just so I get it straight, so every, every school that this affects, the signs will be changed on. That's correct. I'm good. Thank you. You got a lot of work ahead. Councilmember DiNapolis. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. And just kind of just to continue on with... Um, what Councilman Reynard was saying, I, I guess you know what I'm what I'm concerned about is to be as accurate as possible in the time zones that are needed and required, because I think the more accurate you get with the school zone, the more compliance you're going to have with the public, um, you know, and, and 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 that's just basically because I you know I just I, I just don't want you know the the, the driving public there to. Um, to be burdened by by having to guess what these time zones are. So, um, I mean, basically, as long as we get real accurate, I think you're going to follow compliance on it. And so that I, will, I guess we'll just have to see what those time changes are. Okay, thank you. Councilmember DeFrancis, if you want to close, if you could take your light off because there's other council members, and then I'll, um, all right, go ahead and put it back on now. Councilmember Stagney. Thank you, Madam President. I just wanted to recognize the city attorney. He was waving. I think he had a few things to say. Yeah, uh, I did run this by the Jefferson Parish School Board. I spoke with our representative, um, Ms. Dinopoulos, and she applauded the council for, for having a foresight to put this on. So um, the signage I had talked to Mr. Gonzalez about, the start time, I, it, it never entered into the picture. I'll check on that to make sure we're not extending a time that, that we don't have to. But when I spoke with her and other members of the school board, they were mainly concerned about the end time. But it did, I did pass it through the school board. Thank you, Madam President. Mr. Brown, did you wish to address the council? Yeah, I'll be heard on this for just a minute. Rich, Richard Brown, 824 Sessions Lane, Kenner. Um, I think some of my questions may have been answered, but I share some of the concerns raised by Council President Brannigan and by Keith Reno that if we're delaying the end time of the school zones, if we're moving it from 4 p.m. to 5 p.m., I hope that the start time is also going to be moved back an hour. And I'm assuming from what I've heard, that's correct. Is that yes. correct, Mr. Gonzalez? What, what are we going to be doing is contacting every one of the schools, okay, and, and get input from them, okay? And, and we may very well contact the school board as well. So we're going to meet their wishes on a temporary basis. Okay, and then my second concern was, and I think Keith Reno raised this, that I think you're going to have real problems and maybe legal problems if you pass an ordinance changing the times, but you don't post those new times. And I think New Orleans just experienced a problem with that. They adopted a similar ordinance uh, changing the times for the school zones due to the hurricane but had not yet posted the signs on some school zones and some people got tickets for violating the new law even though the signs said the school zone had already ended. I hope Kenner's not going to be doing that. But based on what I think I heard, I think the rest of, the, of my questions were answered. Thank you. I think it says is that it can be any time within those times. All right, Council Member DeFranchis to close. 
Thank you, Council President. Again, it does vary whether you have an elementary school or a middle school or a high school. And that was one of the reasons why we had to be careful in how we, di we did this. But again, to put everyone's mind to rest, the whole idea of this ordinance was to make sure signs would be posted because right now there are changes. And those changes many times the public will not be aware of because there's, they just don't either read the newspaper or they haven't heard it on television or their children haven't brought the, the paperwork home. And I'll give you an example. The principal from uh, Chateau Elementary called because there are signs posted right now, for example, that, uh, that Medoc is a one-way street for part of, the t part of the day when children are being either brought to school or being picked up. And again, the confusion resulted because of the time changes that the school bo board imposed on, on uh, Chateau Elementary and other schools. So for that reason, we contacted Mr. Gonzalez and said, we need to post signs. That's what this was all about, posting signs so the public would know and have the information the public needed. And that's what this ordinance was really about. Um, again, Mr. Gonzalez agreed immediately that we, he, you know, now we do make our own signs. Am I not correct, Mr. Gonzalez? That's we correct. don't have to go out and, and put it on bid for, for an outside company to do it. So it, exp it would expedite the process. And again, our city attorney is working with the school system and with the individual schools we are working with as individually to make sure that the times that will be posted on the sign are accurate and that the information is conveyed to the public. So it will vary, again, from school to school as needed. And finally, one last point while I'm waiting, I wanted to give Councilman Reno a, a chance to say it, is that right now there are signs out there that are confusing the public because they're not accurate. And Chateau Elementary is an example uh, that I can give you. Thank you. All right, the point of order, um, Council Member Reno had a, a specific question for the attorney's office, so we make certain that the legislation is proper, if you would allow, Council Member DeFrancis. Okay, um, sorry, Council Member Reno. Okay, unless I'm reading this wrong, this applies to the entire city of Kenner. So going school to school and mm -hmm. saying we're going to adjust the signs based on that school, every sign in the city of Kenner needs to be changed to reflect mm -hmm. this time from 4 to 5. I just want to make sure that I'm clear because I don't want to go to a school and they say, well, my school, we don't have an issue with this, so you can just leave the speed limit. At, uh, the, the times at the regular times, you don't have to change it. According to this legislation right here, every sign needs to be changed. Am I correct, Mr. Conley? That's my understanding, yeah. I didn't okay. call these schools, but I did speak okay. with the school board. They, they confirmed it. Um, don't forget, like Ms. Castle just brought up, Ms. Benson just brought up, that you also have um, some private schools and things that have to be recognized as well, which is probably why you have a wide, um, you know, birth of hours. But, um, you know, the, the Jefferson Parish School Board told me that this applied to all their schools. At, but it's going to have to apply to every school. I mean, every sign on every school that's in the city of Kenner. I, I just got a little confused. I, you know, I was like, when Mr. Gonzalez was saying, I'm going to go from school to school, it's got to be every it's school. uniform, this, this is citywide. Okay. All right. That's, I just want to confirm that. Thank you very much. Okay. All right. Seeing no further discussion, council members, please vote. Madam Chairman, motion passes 7-0. Item 13 is resolutions and motions by council members. Item 13A is a resolution requesting that the mayor appoint the city attorney and the director of, code of Department of Inspection and Code Enforcement to review cases relative to code enforcement violations pending before mayor's court to determine which cases may fall within the purview of the Board of Standards and Appeal for the city of Kenner. Motion by Council Member DeNapolis for one meeting deferral. Sec Second by Council Member Reno. Council Member DeNapolis, did you want to speak? All right, there you go. No? Okay. Council Members, please vote. Madam Chairman, motion passes 7 0. 
Item 13B is a resolution authorizing the City Council for the City of Kenner to hold a public hearing on Thursday, November 15, 2012, to determine whether or not the buildings located at 1805 Lloyd Price Avenue, Kenner, Louisiana, should not be repaired or demolished. Motion by Councilmember Carroll for indefinite deferral. Second by Councilmember Black. S council members, please vote. That was an indefinite deferral? Indefinite deferral. Okay, thank you. Did somebody want to speak on the deferral? No, okay. Madam Chairman, motion passes 7-0. I think you can speak on indefinite deferral. Right? Item 13C is a resolution authorizing the City Council for the City of Kenner to hold a public hearing on Thursday, November 15, 2012, to determine whether or not the buildings located at 3045 Tupelo Street <laughs> Kenner, Louisiana, should not be repaired or demolished. Motion by Councilmember Carroll, second by Councilmember Black. Council members, please vote. Madam Chairman, motion passes 7 0. Item 13D is a resolution appointing Melinda Hill Holmes as Assistant City Attorney for the City of Kenner. Motion by Councilmember Janapolis, second by Councilmember Stagney. Councilmember Dinapolis. Um, well, this comes as a little bit surprised, but thank you for putting it on the agenda. Um, I happen to know Ms. Holmes. Actually, Ms. Holmes lives in my district, and she actually is my appointment to the uh, to the um, uh, Rivertown board. Um, and, and I want to tell you what a great choice. I've been knowing Ms. Holmes for like the last two or three years, and I know she's here in the audience today. I see her back over there. Hello, Ms. Holmes, but thank you. And like I said, what a great choice that you've done, Mayor and Keith. I know her well, and she's going to serve the city well. Thank you. Mayor Yenny. Thank you. Ms. Holmes comes to us from the New Orleans District Attorney's Office, and we're going to be using her in a capacity for prosecutor for our mayor's court. And, you know, she's got a lot of prosecutorial experience, and we look forward to having her on board. It was, you know, I ran into her at a function, and she told me she retired. And she, we, she had actually come to see us down the line about possibly working full-time a while back in the city attorney's office. And, and then some things happened, and she decided not to. And when I saw her, I said, look, we'd like to have you. So she said, well, I can, I can prosecute for you. So we're very happy to have her on board in mayor's court when we, you know, when the caseloads get bad and Keith needs to pull the trigger on another prosecutor, we've got one in place. So I thank her, and, and thank you for being here tonight, Ms. Holmes. Thank you. Council Member Carroll. Thank you, Madam President. I, too, Ms. Holmes, would like to thank you for uh, your support, like Councilman DiNopolis said about the Rivertown Advisory Committee. And I think it's a fantastic choice by the mayor to have you as a uh, prosecutor for the city of Kenner. Thank you. Thank you, Madam President. Thank you, Councilmember Carroll. Councilmember Stagney. Thank you, Madam President. I, too, know Ms. Holmes and have for probably the last 15 years. Uh, I don't know many people who work as hard as she does. As a single mother, I, I can't remember the number of children, but it's an astounding number. And she worked hard all of those years and always gave back to the community by being on several different boards and commissions. And I think she'll do an outstanding job as a prosecutor for the city. So we welcome you aboard. And Mayor, uh, Mr. Conley, I think you made a very good choice. Mr. Dinapolis, uh, she's been an active uh, member of your district for a long time. Congratulations. Councilmember Dinapolis, if you want to close, if you would just turn your light off for a second to allow the other members to, oh, there we go. Councilmember DeFrancis. And you can put it back. There. Thank you. Um, Ms. Holmes and I have been on a committee together, numerous committees. In fact, one was the Charter Review Committee some years ago. I think she remembers that well, and she worked very, we worked very well together. And so I just wanted to remind her about that and welcome her to the city of Kenner. And I know she's been involved in so many issues. I've seen her at, at church. I've seen her in many places. And on top of that, she's been involved in so many different volunteer-type efforts, giving her her time and effort in the city. And so thank you for all of that as well. I, too, wanted to welcome Ms. Holmes. I uh, probably got to know her uh, for the most amount of time that I've known her as a, when she was a lector at, um, at St. Elizabeth and I guess now at Divine Mercy. Um, and I was surprised. It was a number of years back when I learned that she was an attorney, and then it was a surprise when I learned the number of children that she had and, and how successful her children had become. And now it's a surprise that I hear that she was with the New Orleans District Attorney's Office, so it's the number of years I've learned more and more about you 
not because you've boasted or, or given out information on yourself, Ms. Holmes, it's because um, you're so humble and demure, and I'm just so thrilled to have you as part of our team now, and, and being a resident, I'm surprised, too, that you were on the Rivertown um, Committee, because I did not know that as well, but I know that you've always done your part, and I'm so grateful that you've come in to work for us here at the city with all of the knowledge and expertise and passion for the city that you bring, so, um, and and mostly the passion of a mother. There's nothing more fierce, so we welcome you. Uh, and Councilmember DiNapolis to close. And just to kind of uh, make a little story, and you're right, uh, Mayor, she, she, she did retire, and I, I'll tell you a little story about, it's about three years ago, I get a call from my assistant, Donna, at the offices. Oh, by the way, I have a Melinda Holmes on, on the phone, and she wants to meet with you because she wants to volunteer for any committee. I said, don't let her off the phone, get her name and address, I'll be there an hour to meet her. Because <laughs> it's very rare that you actually get somebody that actually will call you and say they want to serve the public and they want to serve your city. And at that point in time, it's just been a great relationship with Ms. Holmes. And like I said, she is my appointment to the Rivertown um, Committee. And um, I'm great to have her and good to see you. I didn't realize you want to come that much out of retirement, okay? But welcome you to the city. Thank you. Okay. I think you're going to get it, but we got, we do still have to vote. I don't know. We still got to vote. <laughs> Seeing no further discussion, council members, please vote. Madam Chairman, motion passes 7-0. Congratulations. Item 13E is a resolution appointing the members of the Alcoholic Beverage Permit Review Committee. Motion by council member Black, second by council member Brannigan. These these are, um, actually I was gonna ask everybody for some input. We had formed this alcohol and beverage committee, oh my gosh, I guess over a year ago. And um, the, the, their time on the board had expired, so uh, we needed to, or will expire December 1st, correct? Yes. So we needed to either re reappoint our members or appoint someone new. Is there anybody new on the committee or are these all members who have served? They all remain the same. Maybe. Okay, so um, we'll go ahead and read the names out. Um, Mr. Ashley Jacobson, uh, at large District A, my appointment. Mr. Scott Whitaker, at large Division B. Latoya, is it Simons? For District 1. Juan Suarez, District 2. Christy McKinney, District 3. Frank Compagno, District 4. And Ed Lancaster for District 5. And we want to thank them for their service. Um, you know, they don't meet on a, a regular basis. They meet whenever there's a case to be heard. But um, we appreciate all of the work that they've done on this committee and will continue to do and thank them for their service. Council Member Stagney. Thank you, Madam President. This is one of the most uh, active boards when we have situations in the Kenner, in Kenner where we have uh, uh, bars posing as restaurants. I would say, uh, this goes back, Mr. DiNapolis raised the fines uh, several years back. We got the board to be active again, and there are several establishments that have felt the wrath of this committee. I applaud their aggressiveness. Uh, they've gone where they've taken just uh, minimal fines to uh, bars and restaurants to actually pulling their license and coming before us. So we've taken uh, a number of those bars that, let's say, a year ago, year and a half ago, that were problematic in this city and uh, pulled their licenses. And by way of their action, other establishments have seen the aggressiveness of this ABO board and this council with the help of the Kenner Police Department. And, and, and they've set the stage that, that these other establishments are now following, following suit. Now, we still have a few out there that may be problem bars. But by and large, it's really curtailing the, uh, the bad activities that were occurring. So I applaud the members of this board, and I'm happy that we're appointing, I guess, the very same board that took uh, strong enforcement actions against several of the bars last year. Thank you, Madam President. Councilmember DiNapolis. And you're right, Councilman Stadion, this board, you don't want to come before this board. I can tell you, they take their business very seriously. They took the issues that we've had in this town and the complaints that we had from our police chief and suggestions from our police chief to take it very seriously. If you're going to be a bar or a restaurant in this city, you're going to conduct business properly and orderly. 
And I can tell you, and once again, they are a board that has a lot of teeth. And I can tell you that, um, that some of their findings have even come before this council, and this council has even increased those fines. So, um, you know, uh, once you get a letter that you have to appear before this board, you, 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 you're in serious business. You're in serious trouble with the city, and you don't want anybody to operate, um, you know, a bar or a restaurant that's not within uh, the previ of the way we allow you to operate a business. And once again, I applaud these people. They do work hard. The cases that they hear, you know, are very tough cases. I do know that the chief actually um, presents the, the evidence against the establishment, um, and of course this case hears um, the establishment's end of all their answers to the chief and his investigations, and of course um, they render a very, um, you know, at times a very, very stiff fine and penalties, and like Councilman Stagney said, even the possibility of losing your license or, or losing your license for several months, or if not, ex you know, uh, you know uh, expelled. Once again, thank you, appreciate it. Councilmember Carroll. Thank you, Madam President, and, and I too would like to thank all of the uh, citizens who are serving on this particular board. Like everyone has said, this is something that's really important. It's important to our citizens that live in the city of Kenner to ensure that things are being addressed appropriately. Also, I would like to personally thank my appointee, Ms. Latoya Simons, because she not only sits on this board, but she also works with Attorney Shaw as it relates to the blighted property uh, situation and, and doing a fantastic job. She's Probably one of the, she is the youngest on this board, but uh, that doesn't deter her. She gets right in there with everyone else, and uh, you know, I think she's a valuable young lady to our community, and look forward to great things for her. So thank you, Ms. Simons, and uh, thank everyone support for our support. And, and that's you, true, I was President. looking at the members on the board, what a diverse group, because I know my uh, member, Ashley Jacobson, is young, a young mom who's an attorney, and she decided to stay home and raise her children, and what a valuable resource we have in Kenner. Um, that somebody that wants to serve, she actually said she enjoys getting dressed up and, and coming and exercising her brain. So, and then we have older, more retired people, people who have been in the city for a while, new people to uh, the forefront. So this is a great uh, mix of people. So we yeah. thank them so much for their service and, um, and for serving the citizens. Seeing no further discussion, council members, please vote. Madam Chairman, motion passes 7-0. Item 14, is items removed from the consent agenda? We, we have, have none. none. Item 15, is acceptance of contracts and similar matters approved by the mayor. Item 15A, is summary ordinance number 11,415, an ordinance accepting the responsive bid received from Fitness Expo in the amount of $8,890 for the purchase of two Pre-Core Model 32I treadmills for the Kenner Police Department. Motion by Councilmember DeFrancis, second by Councilmember Black. Council members, please vote. Madam Chairman, motion passes 6-0. Councilmember Stagney did not vote. Item 15B is summary ordinance number 11,416, an ordinance accepting the responsive bid received from Dyna Play LLC in the amount of $6,976 to furnish 16 regal style benches without backs for various gyms in accordance with letter bid number 12 1487 for the Kenner Department of Parks and Recreation. Motion by Councilmember Black, second by Councilmember DeFrancis. Council members, please vote. Madam Chairman, motion passes 6-0. Council Member Stagney did not vote. Item 15C is summary ordinance number 11,417. An ordinance authorizing the purchase of one John Deere XUV 625I from John Deere Company in the amount of $8,657.73 under state contract number 4090. 80 for the Department of Parks and Recreation. Motion by Council Member Reno, second by Council Member Carroll. Madam Chairman, we've received a request this evening uh, for a minor amendment to the sixth, whereas the first account number should be 356 5000 5490 1247. Motion by Council Member Reno, second by Council Member Carroll on the amendment. Please vote.
Madam Chairman, motion passes 7-0 to amend. And as amended. Madam Chairman, motion passes 7-0. Item 15D, a summary ordinance number 11,418. An ordinance accepting the responsive bid received from Han Enterprises Incorporated in the amount of $39,685 to furnish and install vinyl wall protection pads at various gyms in accordance with seal bid number 12-6099 for the Kenner Department of Parks and Recreation. Motion by Councilmember Black, second by Councilmember Stagney. Councilmember Black. Thank you, Madam Chairman. Um, for the past um, two or three meetings, we've had, this is the third item we've had by this firm in regards to expenditures, and I think this is probably one of the largest. Explain, um, when you say mats, I'm sure it's, just explain exactly what they're from. Is it, is it wrestling? Is it? No, it's, it's the safety wall pads that go around the gym. So if somebody's playing basketball and they run into the wall, it actually is padded. Okay. That's what this is. So I know that sounds strange, just, you know, sounds silly, but it's, when I asked that question, but I just, I, I hadn't noticed it, and I was in a couple of the gyms this weekend and um, at the, the, the volleyball tournament, and I didn't see any, so I was just wondering what this exactly. Right, that, and that's basically what we're trying to do is make sure that all the pads are on the walls for the safety of the, of the children playing in the gyms. So are we doing this with all the gyms? Yes, all of them will have them, and they'll be uh, current. This is actually um, some uh, contents uh, money from FEMA as well, so this isn't even city money. This is us trying to make sure that we bring the, the, the gyms all up to uh, an equal par. Oh, well, that needs to be said because a lot of people think, oh, they're spending 40000 on mats, but it's actually coming from assistance from the, from the uh, federal government. Correct. Thank you. Thank you. It's interesting to know. Glad I yeah. asked. And it's uh, no relation to Ms. Hahn, right? <laughs> you wish. Okay, Council Member Stagney. Thank you, Madam President. I was going to try to make that point so there would be no confusion. Uh, also, this is part of the mitigation money uh, that we've gotten from FEMA through uh, Mr. Gaffney and your efforts. Uh, this is the same money that... Uh, right. This is, this is actually for the contents in, in the gymnasiums that we've... We, and uh, what we did is we did it as an improved project so that we've been purchasing some of the things we lost from Katrina through, through the city money. So uh, what we did was we, we kind of gave them a list of all the things that were lost and they, they made it as an improved project so we can utilize the, the, the funds on other items that go belong in the gyms and this is one of the things. Well, that with the sport that we're going to be seeing later, the sport courts that you're doing, is this the same pot of money you're talking about? No, this, is, no? this, this set of money is just the, uh, geared towards contents. This is what we've done the scoreboards on, okay. uh, the, the volleyball standards and the different things that we've had. Uh, the, the benches are all from that money. Uh, the floors are a total separate section, um, which is uh, geared strictly for uh, the flooring uh, in each one of our facilities with the hazard mitigation in that one. And that's FEMA money from hazard mitigation, Absolutely. correct? Absolutely. Right. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Councilmember Carroll. <clears throat> Thank you, Madam President. And uh, Mr. Maricoli, this is something that uh, and I appreciate Councilwoman Black concerned about the, the, the monies for this. And the fact that it's coming from the FEMA is, is, is important to be able to get our monies for this. And additionally, for some of the things that are happening within the facilities, the floors, the walls, uh, just as, as a point of information, these pads, some of these pads have been up for 15, 20 years, never been changed. And I'm not sure where you put a cost on safety at. This is not only for the children, but we have uh, adult activities that we use the facilities for that also use this. So without these pads, if you, if you being around the walls in the back of the gym, there would be a number of injuries for a bunch of uh, individuals. So the 39,000 may seem like a lot, but when you compare it to the safety and the number of incidents and accidents that this will prevent, it's, it's only a drop in the bucket. And this is something that is, that is direly needed for, uh, for all of the facilities. Like I said, been there for over 15, close to 20 years. Right, and, and actually it is for several gyms, so it's not right. just one facility. So. Yes, it's, it's 11 gyms, uh, we have 11, facilities in, in the city of Kenner. Right, but th there's some that are, uh, the, the wall pads are up to standards and everything mm -hmm. is fine with, and these are the ones that will get those up, the, the remaining ones up to those standards. Right, I mean, cosmetically, obviously, it will look, look nice, but also from a safety standpoint, 
it, it doesn't it doesn't compare to what it will bring to the uh, city of Kenner. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you, Madam President. Okay, seeing no further discussion, council members, please vote. Madam Chairman, motion passes 7-0. Item 16 is ordinances and resolutions in summary for first reading. Item 16A is an ordinance ratifying an emergency repair in the amount of $78,063.60 for the removal of the existing vinyl gym flooring and installation of a new modular athletic gym floor at Susan Park Gym located at 502 Veterans Boulevard by Sport Court South for the Kenner Department of Parks and Recreation. Item 16B is an ordinance accepting the responsive bid received from Southland Plumbing Supply Incorporated in the amount of $5,577.50 to furnish two outdoor tubular bottle filling stations with a water fountain in accordance with telephone bid number T12-1931 for the Kenner Department of Parks and Recreation. Item 16C is an ordinance amending section 3-24C of the Kenner Code of Ordinances to exclude immovable property, buildings, and facilities situated in the Rivertown Historical District from the location and physical requirements provision for the issuance of an alcohol beverage permit. Item 16D is an ordinance authorizing the City of Kenner to hold a public auction on December 13, 2012 to sell surplus movable property no longer needed for public purposes and setting the terms and disposition of proceeds from the auction. Item 16E is an ordinance amending the budget and accepting the award of fiscal year 2012 emergency solutions grant from the State of Louisiana Department of Children and Family Services in the amount of $51,500 for the Department of Community Development. Item 16F is an ordinance approving the plan of resubdivision of parcel Y, square 5, into parcel Y1 and Y2, Redwood Park Subdivision, Kenner, Louisiana, and amending ordinance number 2427, the City of Kenner Comprehensive Zoning Ordinance, by rezoning existing parcel X and proposed parcel Y1, square 5, from R3, multifamily residential, to C2, general commercial, and rezoning proposed parcel Y2, square 5, from R3, multifamily residential, to R1, single-family residential. Item 16G is an ordinance approving a text amendment to ordinance number 2427, the City of Kenner Comprehensive Zoning Ordinance, more specifically amending Article 3, Section 3.02A definitions by adding a new subsection, 49A, defining a funeral home use in accordance therewith. Item 16H is an ordinance authorizing the mayor to enter into a cooperative endeavor agreement between the City of Kenner and the State of Louisiana, Department of Public Safety and Corrections for the use and occupancy of office space located at 421 Williams. Boulevard, Kenner, Louisiana, to provide convenient access to efficient, effective, and useful public services and other related matters. Item 16 I is an ordinance authorizing an increase in the salary of Wendy Fulce as Director of the Personnel Department. Item 16 J is an ordinance accepting the responsive bid received from Metal Graphics Incorporated in the amount of $12,000 to fabricate and install a historical signage wall in the City of Kenner Council Chambers. Item 17 is reports from Council and our special committees. Yes, we have Councilmember DeNapolis. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Earlier today in the Council Chambers, um, the Taxi Cab Committee um, uh, met, and we actually had a, had a third public hearing at which uh, uh, Co-Chair um, Councilwoman DeFranchez and Tamithia Shah, our Co-Director, was there. And it was about a two-hour meeting, mm -hmm. and, and basically to tell the, the, the public that um, the outcome of the meeting is that at the next council meeting, we are going to be presenting um, some code changes to the uh, tax cab code of, 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 of codes and ordinances to the council, as well as um, the committee also requests that, um, that we draft a response to the um, regional um, taxi cab um, uh, what we call uh, Council, Councilwoman DeFrances, the the the, uh, the developments at the airport and, and the city council. Okay, so you'll be actually seeing that at the next council meeting, um, both um, the drafting of that particular response and also the adding of the ordinances to our code. Thank you. Okay, Councilmember DeFrances. 
I just wanted to add one thing that we allowed and, and encouraged the um, members of the taxi cab community here in Kenner to give their input. And um, our uh, code enforcement director, Ms. Shaw, put a um, together questionnaire together to uh, have them, uh, to give them the opportunity to uh, express some of the issues that they have and their feelings about those issues. And all of that will be reviewed by Ms. Shaw and uh, Councilman Dinopoulos and myself, um, again, to make sure that any action that's taken by, or any proposal that we put before this council and the administration, that we have taken uh, into account all the concerns of the people that are most uh, going to be affected by any and all changes. Uh, so thank you again, Ms. Shaw, today for all your help, and to, again, Councilman Dinopoulos uh, for, working, for allowing me to work together with you on this issue. Councilmember Stagney. Thank you, Madam President. And I guess this is to the chairman of the committee, Mr. Dinopoulos, or Ms. Shaw, our co-director. Even though the airport is located within the city of Kenner, the boundaries, uh, does, a Kenner, does a city get to regulate the taxi cabs at the airport since they're within our jurisdiction? Here, wait. Well, let me give your mic on for you. There you go. Thank you. I'm going to let Ms. Shaw, Shaw answer that. There is a, uh, there is a um, uh, laws that were passed by the state of Louisiana allowing the airport to, to, to have its own authority to govern ground transportation at the airport, which kind of conflicts with us as a city to be able to govern ground transportation within the city limits. So there is a little bit of a disconnect there. However, we're trying to um, actually, um, you know, get with the airport authority and try to work some of these differences out so that we don't have, you know, some far off disagreements, okay? Um, it, it, and that's why, when I stated earlier, is that um, we, the taxi cab committee was formed to handle two things. Number one is to upgrade and update the codes that are particular to taxi cabs here in Kenner. And the second phase of our meeting and, and, and public discussions that we've had is actually a response that the committee is going to recommend to the council that we send a unified response to the airport authority as well as the city council of New Orleans um, some of the disagreements that we do have in how they're going to apply um, uh, their interpretation of how they're going to handle ground transportation within our city. And, and you're correct. This is why this is going to be coming for the council, the next council meeting. I, you know, as I know many years ago, this was 90, I don't know, 96. I, I was one of several citizens. There were several council members. It was not the initial draft of a conditional use of anything happening at the airport. All they would have to do is let's go to the administration and sign off on a, uh, on a permit. And the people who were affected by what happened at the airport never had a voice at what happened there. And, and several people from the community, including myself, several council members up here, uh, the final draft of that legislation included a process, a very public process, which forced the airport to go through our planning process. Uh, anything we need to do to increase our local zoning authority with respect to the airport, we should do. I mean, we want to be good partners, but you know, everybody has to abide by the same rules. And I, I know that in the past, our taxi cab drivers were at an unfair uh, disadvantage, uh, having, allowing sometimes to bring fares in town and not being able to pick them up. So I applaud the taxi cab committee and Ms. Shaw. We need to uh, aggressively uh, bolster our, our local zoning authority when it comes to some of the, some of the issues out there. Thank you, Madam President. Councilmember Carroll. Thank you, Madam President. A couple of meetings ago, we had an opportunity to hear from one of the residents, Ms. Pat Davis, from the Lincoln Manor subdivision as it relates to the Martin Luther King uh, Center. And uh, Ms. Terrell wasn't here, but she is here today. And I would like Ms. Terrell to come up just to be able to give us an update on the construction is, is what was one of the concerns. Also, the you know when are we going to be looking into probably reopening and address some of the things that uh, a lot of the people, not only from the Lincoln Manor subdivision, but the but the school at GT Woods and everyone else that uses this facility throughout the city of Kenner. That is very important. Director Terrell, thank you. Good evening. Um, 
as everyone knows, the, um, I think the Martin Luther King Center is currently under construction, as uh, Councilman Carroll said. Um, the renovations will make the, the facility much more use, useful and um, usable by the community. Um, for example, we're um, making the interior modifications will allow us to go from one computer lab, which we currently have, to two computer labs. Uh, currently, we don't have a private conference room um, for meetings or workshops and things of that nature. We'll have a private conference room and just other um, interior modifications, as I said, to make it more useful. The center's been there, um, I, you know, for several years, um, and um, it's been used a lot. So we're going to do painting and, and, and give it a little facelift um, to um, just enhance the, the facility. Uh, we've been requested by Ms. Davis, and it's been a concern of the community um, when the facility is rented, um, the lack of an ice maker and not having ice and some other things. So we're going to add an ice maker and do some other things that will um, improve the, the, the building, both internal and external. Um, we're upgrading the lighting outside um, to make the parking lot um, uh, more lighted at night, especially when we have um, night events. And we're also um, installing a lighted sign that has the magnetic letters where they're changeable um, to notify the community when we have special events you know, going on at the center. They'll be able to just pass by and read about it as opposed to hopefully um, seeing it um, in a flyer that, that's possibly distributed at their home or possibly on KTV. This will be another avenue for us to market our programs and services at the center. Um, as, as you mentioned, and for the benefit of the public, the center has been closed during this time. Um, basically, um, for safety reasons, it is under construction, um, and there's um, um, a lot of activity going on from uh, a work standpoint, so it's not a safe environment for any citizens to be in at this time. We're hopeful that the, the construction phase will be completed uh, at the beginning of um, the year, and we'll have the center open to, to resume its normal operations. All right, so the schedule to be open, obviously, and I don't want to hold you to a date, obviously, mm -hmm. for the beginning of next year, yes. sure. And a number of the activities also was a question about, you know, support, allegedly there were some, we had a lot of things going on, obviously. Uh -huh. We want to be able to retain a lot of those services. So right. at, at this time, are we able to see exactly, after the construction, to see exactly what will we have, what will we bring back, what will we have new? Have mm -hmm. that schedule been worked out yet well, for the center? You know, as with all of our programs, it's dependent on funding. Mm -hmm. And... Um, over the past two years, as I've come before the council, we were fortunate to receive a lot of state monies that helped us to do a lot of different things. Um, those, those monies have expired, but with the funds that we do have, we will continue to maximize the programs and services that we have at the center. I don't think the citizens will see um, you know, any noticeable decline in services, let me say that. Right, and there are a number of, of, of partners uh, yes. to say that uh, that I would like to thank the Ashna, Kenner Ashna Hospital, the uh, Vineyard Churches also who will be participating to be able to, to cover some of the things that if we don't have at full capacity, they have mentioned it. You know, we've talked to Mr. Maricoli, we've done some reconstruction for the gym upstairs. So there's a number of things. They've had some changes at GT Woods in the school principals. They've had three different principals in, in one year. So, you know, each time we move in that direction, something happens. So if not this year, definitely for the beginning of next school year, we will have a plan in place, I think, to address as it relates to the, the tutoring and different things that will accommodate uh, for the MLK and for the Lincoln Manor Playground and for children within the city of Kenner. Yeah, and I'm glad you mentioned that because um, I, I do want to also commend the vineyard. We've had uh, several volunteers. <coughs> excuse me, that have gone through our process that we're required to, to um, have in place when volunteers come and they want to work with our children. We have, you know, um, background checks done. Um, it's conducted by our um, personnel department, and that church has provided many volunteers to help with our after-school program at the Hispanic Resource Center, and they've also offered to do the same thing at the MLK Center. And, and you're absolutely right. We have a lot of partners that we work in with.
with. That's what the center is all about, bringing programs and resources to the community. And just this past week, let me just say, you'll be seeing this item coming up on the agenda. The mayor and I met with members from the State Department of Insurance, and we're about to become Medicare and Medicaid um, intake specialists, or should I say the counselors at our community centers will become Medicaid and Medicare intake specialists. And so, you know, that's what the community centers are all about, bringing programs and services to, to the citizens. Well, th that's news to me, and it, but it's, it's a welcome news for sure. Yep. And uh, Thank you the know, mayor. One, of, one of the things, I mean, we have a number Keeps of- me busy, working hard. <laughs> you know, we have community centers, and these are the type facilities that can accommodate people throughout the entire city. Mm -hmm. Sometimes there's a notion that it's only for people who live here or people who live there, but this is for everyone. And I think the message needs to be put out there that if, if there are services that can accommodate you or your family members, call the mayor's office, call your department, right. call recreation department to find out, because if you assume that it doesn't apply to you, you won't know. So I would, I would encourage everyone to, to, if there is, a, there is a service that you can benefit from, call around to find out because there are a lot of services within the city of Kenner that, that we don't toot our horn enough about and it's there and I think these are things that will be very supportive with the number of uh, economic constraints that we're under right now. So, you know, thanks a lot for this. We'll be, I'll be talking to you again okay. to be able to come back and update us more and we look forward to the, uh, to the MLK bringing back, being back in force for everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Madam President. Ms. Terrell, if you'll wait a moment. I, I have a couple council members who've already spoken, so I'm suspecting that they may have something for you on this subject, so if you'll just wait one second. Council Member Carroll's finished. Council Member Stagney, is that the case you had? Okay, Council Member Stagney. Thank you, Madam President. Uh, do we get any funding from being uh, Medicare and Medicaid intake uh, specialists? I, I wish we did. <laughs> But that's an excellent service. We get, um, they provide the, the free training um, for staff. And, you know, when you operate a resource center, unfortunately, citizens think you know it all, you know, that you have all the answers. But it will equip, um, you know, staff to have um, more knowledge and, and be in a position to be more informative um, for the, um, the citizens of Kenan, particularly our elderly. It's um, a new program that the state has um, started. It's called the SHIP program, and I'm not sure what SHIP stands for, I don't want to give you some wrong information, but basically um, the governor's office is encouraging um, partnerships uh, affected through memorandum of understandings with municipalities to um, work with the, the Medicare and the Medicaid program. As I recall, no funding. When, that's okay, when Ms. Davis came before us, uh, and I understand the time frame that you all are looking at, you don't want to commit to a specific uh, day, but it's sometime after the first of the year. But what I thought she had asked was about a particular type of instruction, not necessarily the instructor, but she's sitting back here, and if I'm correct, didn't you ask Ms. Davis whether a certain type of instruction was going to be uh, resumed sometime in the future? What type of instruction was that? Because I cannot remember that. So if you couldn't hear, it was a GED program, after school program, and computer program. Can you enlighten us as to whether those programs would continue uh, those services at least? It's definitely our plans to continue those programs. We have the GED, or should I say, prior to the um, construction, we had the GED and the after school program in place. The computer program that's, that she mentioned is a request that the community has um, had for quite a while, and the difficulty has been finding an instructor. Just recently, um, I met with the Recreation Department, and Recreation is about to hire a certified um, I, you know, computer. Whatever they are, computer people. Yes, okay. yes, and um, and that, that per we will piggyback on that employee to provide um, training and classes at the MLK Center, so it's, it's just good that it's all coming together. Okay, I just mm -hmm. wanted to make sure her question was answered. Thank you, Mr. No Brown. problem, thank you. Okay, I see there's others out of order that have already spoken. Uh, Ms. Uh, Mr. DiNapolis, did you need, wish to address? Okay, Go, your mic's on. 
Thank you, uh, Madam Chair. I'm just kind of curious. I know you know you express the need of these community centers and and what they do in the community. And I'm asking, how is the one coming at the old Wentworth? You don't miss an opportunity. No, I don't. <laughs> It's coming along um, pretty well. We received, I think, preliminary plans from the architect. Um, Mr. Maricoli has signed off on them. This occurred when I was out on sick leave, so I got to okay. get caught up. But it's, it's moving along, and I think we'll be ready to go to bid pretty soon. Pretty soon. Okay. Yes. Right, because so, like I said, that'll we, be a very nice. And just to let the people in also. District Five know that we are actually going to be having a community center in yes. District Five, and it's actually going to be located at the old Wentwood Gym. Yes. And as soon as we can get it, you know what a valuable resource it is to the community. So as soon as we get up and running, that'd be great. No problem. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay, and Councilmember DeFrancis, you've also had a <laughs> time to speak. Was this on? Okay, Councilmember DeFrancis. Your mic is on because oh, you're out of order, sorry. so I can't no problem. give you the... Uh, it, it's just interesting to me today. I, I happened to be in... It actually, was in uh, District 3 today, mm -hmm. and a young man ran up to me and called my name and gave me a hug, and he said, Mr. Francis, Mr. Francis, I want to get my GED. Can you give me some information of where I can go to get my GED? And I promised him I would get back to him because I know there are some programs at Bonneville and other places as well as here in the city of Kenner, and I wasn't quite sure if we were up and running yet. Right. So it's just, uh, per, you know, very fortuitous that he approached me at the time that he did because I, we've got to encourage our kids whenever possible. If they dropped out of school, they need to make sure they have the education they need and, and then the opportunities will hopefully will be there for them. So I'm so glad to hear that we're going Thank to get that program up and running. I am very proud of the GED program at the MLK Center. I hear a lot of comments about it. The staff that that works there through the Jefferson Parish school system are just absolutely wonderful. And that was one of the biggest regrets that we had when, you know, we had to close down operations for construction was, you know, not being able to have, you know, that program up and running. So we will definitely have it back at the center and um, it's very well attended. I think we may have one of the highest um, success rates with graduates from the MLK Center and through I that will GED tell you, program. This young man is a very lovely young man, bright, and I know he's going to be one of those numbers that you're talking about that will show that he completes the program and moves on. So thank you so much mm -hmm. for all your help. Thank you. Okay, and Councilmember Carroll, did you have something else for Ms. Terrell? Is, let me get your mic on for you because we're a little out of order here that I can't give you the manual way to do it. Go ahead. And while you're doing that, I just want to mention the, the acronym SHIP. It stands for Senior Health Insurance Program. You talk, okay. Oh, yeah, Councilman Stagney looked it up on the, on the uh, internet, and oh. it's, it's a little bit different. That SHIP is a little bit different from the SHIP you showed with me. <laughs> The SHIP that he said is State Health Insurance Counseling and Assistant Program. So we got to get our ship, <laughs> sh ships together. Good ship is sailing. That's right. You know, so, uh, but, but I wanted to, to comment on the fact that the, the counseling, the, uh, the support for the computer lab, mm -hmm. this is one of the things we're talking about, the partnership with the Vineyard Churches mm -hmm. and Ashner the exact conversations we had to be able to help people support. Because I believe we have equipment uh, in, in, oh, yeah. in a number of the gyms in that facility, but we need the bodies or people who are, who are IT, you know, enough, and yeah. unlike myself, to be able to uh, facilitate that because, you know, we, that's, that's what things are going to know, and I think it would be real helpful yes. for the children to get that. So, and the seniors. And the seniors, correct. Thank you, Madam President. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Terrell. Thank you. All right, um, and Ms. Terrell, before you go, um, is the food drive over? No, the food drive starts next Monday. Next November Monday 5th, the 9th? The no, 5th. No, 5th. November 5th, and it goes through the 12th. And so there will, I was starting to make my box for my Good. place, my business where I work, and I, was, I couldn't remember and I thought it was before the next council meeting, but I guess right. not because it's today's the 1st of November. Right. So the 5th through that following Saturday, That's they'll correct. be at all the fire gymnasiums. stations and all of the gyms. Gyms yes. and fire stations yes. so people can bring their canned goods there. Exactly. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Um, also, I wanted to tell the mayor, he, is he still here? Yeah, that was, that's, that's it. Did he leave? Well, 
our best kept secret is no longer a secret because I told so many people to go absentee vote that, that lived anywhere in Jefferson Parish. They could go out in Kenner. You just pull right up, you walk right in, you vote, you can leave. And an hour and a half later, <laughs> they called me and told me that that was no longer the case. So I'm grateful that there were so many people uh, who were out voting. And I'm always cautious to give away the best kept secrets because you know, then they're no longer secrets. But no, we're thrilled that so many people have learned about our site um, here in Kenner for Jefferson Parish and have utilized it. And certainly, uh, we're thrilled that everybody got out and vote. But for those of you who did not, please do not forget that election day is um, Tuesday the 6th. And to please uh, go to your polls now, no longer at the at the centers at the Joe Yenny or at our center, but go to your your local poll, your neighborhood poll, and and just get out and vote on Tuesday. Um, let me. I got to move me around. So one second, then it's going to be Councilmember Black. Okay, Councilmember Black. Thank you, Madam Chairman. Um, I know that this is usually, Gregory, I'm stealing some of your time here because you know, you I know, want, you know South Kenner girl is But you know, it's, it's hard to, to uh, change your old habits since I right. grew up in, in District 1, um, as well as my father. So it's always been a special place for me. And Williams Boulevard in Rivertown has always been a, one dear to my heart. You know, the city of Kenner had been criticized in the past for the monies that we had spent in Rivertown. And whatever we did, we tried to make it appealing to draw people into that older section of the historical sections of Kenner. And I am so pleased to, uh, I jotted some things down that have been occurring um, in Rivertown. And I think a lot of the success is due to the Rivertown Committee. And uh, the heading of, the, of that committee is uh, Justice of the Peace, Mr. Kevin Santani, who has brought some things into Rivertown. But uh, in, in especially Deutsch House, the Oktoberfest, which we had for three weekends on Fridays and Saturdays, which brought people out to Kenner. And um, it was a, a great su success and, and made people realize that hey, there's a, a nice place that we can all accumulate, a, 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 a pleasant location, easy to get to, parking available uh, most of the time, and good music and good entertainment and good things to, that you could bring your kids to. Uh, additionally, as Ms. Uh, um, Council Chairman Brannigan said, <clears throat> we had a record number amount of voters. I went the very first day and uh, it ran so smooth. We were playing musical chairs, you, 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 but you moved right along, and um, it was a record turnout. I think I was there for a total of 30 minutes, but as soon as, as Ms. Brannigan said, the word got out, um, it became a popular spot to go and vote. You could sit down, and it was air conditioned, you had ample space, plenty of parking, so that was another good attribute that we had, having that register of voters office in Rivertown. Um, Third of all, um, I know that there's been a lot of speculation and a lot of talk, but I've heard it um, first, second, and third hand that the uh, Office of Motor Vehicle um, uh, Department is talking about coming into Rivertown also. And that is going to be in the um, on Williams Boulevard facing the parking lot. So we're gonna have the Motor Vehicle Office is now gonna be located in Rivertown. And, and um, so that's going to be another thing that we can say, hey, you know, we've been trying to bring people into Rivertown, and all we had to do was just give them the things that they really need. That's to be able to vote, go and get your, uh, your uh, new license, uh, driver's license, and give exposures to the different uh, restaurants and the communities and the shops that we have there. So um, if, I'm very pleased that we've been able to do this under um, in, in the time frame that we've had because it seemed like everything we did in the past didn't succeed. So uh, we just have to give people what they need and bring it to the, for them for their convenience. And last but not least, our farmer's market. Farmer's market is this Saturday. So come out and get all your fresh produce. You know, all, the spring is in the air, autumn is 
the chillin' is in the air, all your fresh green vegetables and everything you need is right there. So we encourage you to come out. There's um, cooking shows, there's other things besides just purchasing your, um, your vegetables and things of that nature. So I'm just happy to say that Rivertown is coming around and we're very happy that all of these um, <clears throat> all of these promotions have been taking place and um, hopefully everyone will respond to them and keep coming. Thank you. And I think the only thing we didn't mention was our Veterans Day ceremony, which is next uh, Wednesday, November uh, 7th at 11 o'clock in Veterans Park. It's 10, 10 a.m.? Thank you. Okay, I see Councilmember Carroll and Councilmember Stagney who have both spoken. Is this just former? All right, guys, quickly. On Rivertown, very quickly, I, I think we also have to give credit to KTV, an arm of our city government that does a phenomenal job of promoting both. Uh, they did features on KTV and I think YouTube with the <laughs> Registrar of Voters Office being here, even talking. Uh, ad nauseum at the process that they would go through for early voting for this election. And I thought they did an excellent job with that. Two, uh, even more importantly, several years ago through an agreement, uh, we formed the Rivertown Advisory Committee. Uh, as uh, Councilwoman Black said, uh, Judge Kevin Santani is its chair, uh, Councilman Carroll, and Councilwoman Brannigan were on the forefront of forming that committee. And you've seen a number of changes occur over the last two years. And I give them great credit. Uh, they have been meeting uh, regularly, trying to make things happen in Rivertown. They deserve a lot of credit for some of the things that are starting to occur. And I hope they continue the great work that they've been doing. So I wanted to give credit to Councilman Carroll, Councilwoman Brannigan, this council, and that committee for, uh, for having the foresight to see that we needed some uh, activity to occur over there. Thank you, Madam President. Okay, let's move along. And now we don't have a clerk. Item 18. Sorry. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Item 18 is new business. Item 18A, we took it earlier junction. Item 19 is unfinished business and our motions to reconsider or remove, or remove from a tabled position. We had none. Item 20 is persons wishing to address the council on special subject matters. We have Mr. Jack Zewi. Thank you, ma thank you, Madam President. Jack Zewi, 3221 Illinois Avenue, Kenner, Louisiana. The following comments are a result of my own research as a result of information put out in the news media regarding Chief John Helmers. These are my comments, and I believe them to be public, protected under free speech. This is a letter I'd like to read to the council. Dear Madam President, John Helmers received ethical training on May 10th, 2012. It is apparent to this taxpayer that Mr. Helmers may have been sleeping when section RS 42-1116 was discussed. Mr. Helmers instructed his secretary, Ms. Template, to submit an application for payments under the City of Kenner Firefighter Education and Senate Program after being told by Ms. Template that he was not eligible. If Ms. Template's public statements are in fact false, she should be disciplined in a City of Kenner's Code of Conduct policy for spreading false information. John Helmers appears to have committed two felonies, submitting public documents that contain false statements and accepting some public funds for which he was not eligible. Mr. Helmers appears to have also violated Louisiana Code of Ethics for public employees by instructing his subordinate, his secretary, to submit public documents that contain false information. Mr. Helmers appears to have also violated several sections of the City of Kenner's Code for conduct of all employees, namely 6.1 through .611. Mr. Helmers used city-owned equipment, a fax machine, to communicate with others, believed to be his personal attorney on this matter during normal working hours on September 27, 2012 at 11.26 a.m. I would have expected Mary Yanni and the administration to zero in on section 6.1, causing adverse public criticism to the city administration. Mr. Helmers has caused this to occur on several occasions. Public concern with the purchase of two fire trucks, lapse in EMT first aid responder, fire educational incentive pay program, 
And unless something changes, January 2013, expiration of the HAZMAT certification for several City of Kenner firefighter platoons. I find nowhere in RS-4267 a provision for any public body or any representative of this body to offer interest-free loans to its employees. In a letter dated 20, September 26, 2012, Mayor Yenny makes such an offer to Mr. Helmers regarding repayment of $2,900 to the taxpayers of Kenner. The statute requires repayment of all money paid in full plus legal interest. In closing, why has the recommendation of the city attorney not been followed, particularly when it pertains to the breach of trust and the questionable expenditure of public funds? The public is entitled to an answer. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Zewing. Mr. Al Morella. Al Morella, 4260 East Loyola Drive, 5th District, 40 years. Uh, I want to make some comments uh, concerning the two referendums that are on the ballot uh, November the 6th. I'm already on the record as opposing both of them. Uh, the one uh, relative to our uh, unclassified employees, let me just say this. Uh, whether they work for the city of Kennel, no matter where they work, our unclassified employees have a fundamental right as American citizens to vote for the candidate of their choice. So let me just make that specifically clear. And, and, and if they are barred from participating in any campaigns, they don't, follow on, they don't fall under civil service rules, that means they have no job protection. It's unfortunate, but uh, that's the way it is back here, and that's the way it's been for the 40 years that I've been living back here. It shouldn't be like that. Fundamental right to vote for the candidate of their choice. The second referendum concerning uh, professional service contracts, okay? Uh, I've never agreed with the way professional service contracts were let back here, but this process is already flawed. And I believe that, that, that if we bring the council into this thing, it's going to be flawed even more than what it already is. I think the right step in the direction would have been to mandate that these contracts be placed under the public bid laws. Since there's no mandate, I can't support that neither. Uh, Veterans Day <coughs> uh, observance, Wednesday morning, 10 o'clock. I want to say uh, God bless and keep all of our veterans who served all of our current military men and women who are serving, and uh, may God bless them and bring them home safely. Anybody got any comments, any questions for me? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for correcting that time. You're welcome. Mr. Richard Brown. Thank you, Madam President. I won't be but a minute. I'm Richard Brown, 824 Sessions Lane, Kenner, Louisiana and I'm Secretary of Citizens for a Better Kenner, and we strongly support both Kenner charter changes. Our president, Walt Benetti, is here, and I'm going to let him speak to those issues. But I wanted to respond to one thing in particular that Mr. Morellis said. These charter changes won't prevent city employees from voting for the candidates of their choice. It simply prevents them from being from engaging in political activity, going out door to door, soliciting for candidates. It, it protects them from pressure from, from politicians for having to support candidates. It does not at all affect their right to vote for the candidates of their choice. Citizens for a Better Kenner has this information on our website, which is citizensforabetterkenner.com. We also have a Facebook page, Citizens for a Better Kenner. But I'm going to let our president, Walt Benetti, explain our reasons for supporting these two charter changes. Thank you. Thank you, Council President. Walt Benetti, 3009 Illinois Avenue in Councilman Stagney's district. Uh, as Mr. Brown mentioned, we do support and strongly encourage everyone who has not already taken advantage of early voting to make sure that they vote on Tuesday and also consider supporting the two proposed Kenner charter changes. Uh, Mr. Brown spoke about uh, proposition number one. Proposition two is, uh, we think, good government legislation as well, which would provide uh, 
all contracts over $100,000, all professional services contracts to come before the council and have council approval as well as a public hearing so that the public can be more involved and, uh, and also the legislative body can have the approval of whatever the mayor negotiates and, uh, and hopefully those contracts will be in our best interest. Uh, I'd also like to uh, commend the, uh, uh, as, as Mr. Brown mentioned as well, I'd also like to reiterate, we do have the information up on our website, www.citizensforabetterkenner.com. On the top, there is a tab called Election Day. If you click on that tab, you, it will lead you to additional information about the two propositions and, uh, and what a vote for and against is, and, uh, and also more information about those proposed uh, charter changes. I'd like to commend the mayor, I'm uh, sorry that he's not here, uh, for recommending the renewal of the Crescent City Connection tolls um, for the next 20 years, uh, proving once again that this mayor has never met a tax, a toll, or a fee that he doesn't like. So make sure that you vote yes on the proposed Kenner charter changes. Please vote no on the Crescent City Connection toll. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, seeing no further Persons wishing to address the council meeting is adjourned. Oh. I thought you. Yeah, I want. Yeah, I, my mic is on. I, I just thought it was on. I'm, I apologize for that. Okay. Um, I'll, I'll be brief. I won't. Uh, okay. Yes, I apologize. Thank you, Madam President, and I want to. I want to thank Mr. Zewi and Mr. Morella for always coming up and speaking their opinion. But I want to address, as far as Mr. Zewi, for that information. I am not in a position to, to hold court here on, Mr. on the chief, and I will never do that. But I am disappointed that my, and I'm only gonna speak for myself as a council, that we did not receive a letter addressing this. I found this information out at a function, did not know, did not have any information. Uh, I wouldn't have addressed it in detail, but it would have been appropriate for the council to receive information as it related to that. I mean, it's part of our, to be stewards of our monies and everything else, to know we were not informed. We found out later through other information, hearsay and that. I would think in the future that the administration would supply us with this information. So we will know something to be able to uh, have from a knowledge standpoint and to be able to address our constituents when they ask about this, because I think it's our responsibility. Thank you, Madam President. Okay, now it's adjourned.